Welcome back. Let's talk about stops. So welcome back to the Traders Improve podcast. My name is Rolf and I want to talk about how to place a stop loss order and what options you have, the pros and cons, and what you need to keep in mind. So first of all, there are usually three broad stop loss categories. I call them time-based, fixed, and location-based stops. So usually people start with a location-based stop loss, and this is also my preferred method where I look for very important support and resistance, high and low, or supply and demand areas on my charts. You can also use Fibonacci levels. Uh, moving averages are often used as well. And then you just place your stop loss on the other side of this, um, yeah, this trading tool, this concept that you're choosing. So, for example, let's say you are a breakout trader and you trade a long uh, position when the market is breaking to the upside. And when the market is closing outside above the range, you enter the market and your stop loss goes underneath the resistance level. So the stop loss is inside the range. Why? The thinking is that you always want to protect your stop loss. You want to make it as hard for the market as possible to reach it. And at the same time, you want that when your stop loss is hit and only when your stop loss is hit, it proves your trade idea wrong. So as long as the market is above the range and as long as the market is trading above the resistance, the breakout is still valid. But what if the market falls back into the range and comes back into the range? It means that your trade idea is probably not valid anymore and then you want to be taken out. So this is a location-based stop loss and it's always nice to ask yourself when you place a location-based stop loss, um, where is my stop or when is my trade idea proven wrong? And this is very nice. So for example, if you trade a moving average uh, crossover, you want to place your stop loss on the other side of the moving average because, well, the trade idea is that, okay, I am uh, long or short when the moving average cross, but if, they, if the price goes back on the other side of the moving average, then I want to be out of the market. And then that's, that's where your stop loss needs to be. Another approach is a time-based stop loss um, where you give your trade a certain period of time or candlesticks or bars. Um, so for example, let's say, come back to the example with the range, let's say the breakout happened, you have a very strong candle that initiate the breakout out of the range, but then the market doesn't go anywhere. The market just goes sideways. And what does it mean? Well, first of all, what was the idea behind your trade? The trade idea is that, okay, the breakout happened, and I think, or the trade idea is that the market will follow through because, well, it exited the sideways range, and now the price is going to go upwards because after a breakout, a new trend is started. But let's say the market doesn't do anything for two, three, four, five candles. At one point, you need to ask yourself, okay, is my trade idea really valid? Or maybe my trade idea is not really uh, proven right because the market is not following through. And it really helps to approach all your trades with this hypothesis, with this trade idea. Always ask yourself, what is my trade idea? And what do I expect from the market? And if the market isn't following through, then you need to get out because obviously you're not right. And with a time-based stop loss, uh, what is usually the best approach is that you, you, you choose a specific amount of time or candles. So, for example, I know traders who say, okay, I give my tr uh, trade at least um, three candles, and if after three candles I am not in a good profit, then I will exit the trade, and that is basically then a time-based stop loss. Another approach, the third approach, is a fixed stop loss. And I'm not a very big fan of that because it's too random. And what does it mean is that traders say, okay, I'm always going to use a 20 pip stop loss. I'm always going to use a 30 or 40 or 50 pip stop loss. But I really don't like this approach because it's it doesn't really make sense in a chart context often. Uh, when the volatility is high, when the price is moving a lot, you need a wider stop loss. But when the market isn't moving a lot, you need a smaller stop loss because the market is just not moving. And it will, yeah, it's, it's not necessary to have a big stop loss. And at the same time, 
you will need a smaller take profit as well, and then you are ruining your your, your reward to risk ratio. So a fixed stop loss is very, very, um, it can be dangerous. It's not the best approach in my personal opinion uh, because also, well, because I'm a very big proponent of the location-based stop loss, um, often a fixed stop loss, a fixed point stop loss, it will be at a random place and um, not where it is protected. What I like to do is you can also uh, combine different approaches, so a three to three in one stop loss approach. What is that? So first of all, you need to have a stop loss that makes sense in your chart context. This is the location based um, stop loss. So this is what you really need. Then you can add a component of um, a point based stop loss. So let's say, okay, we come back to our breakout example and then um, you choose your stop loss at the resistance. But you don't put it right at the resistance because we all know pullbacks and retests um, are, are very common. So for, for your stop loss, you always add 10 pips, for example, to, to, your, to your stop loss to move it a little bit further away from, from the resistance area. And this is a, a so-called buffer. It gives your stop loss extra protection. And I have, or just you probably know if you have some experience that how often do you get into a trade and then the market comes right back at your stop loss, you get stopped out to the pip, and then the market reverses into your trade direction. With a little bit of a buffer, this will not happen as often because many traders will put their stop loss right at a support or resistance or right at a moving average. And then it's very, very easy for the big players and the smart money to know where is your, where's your stop loss. So add a little bit of a buffer. And then the third point after location and the little buffer, um, you also incorporate a time component. So after the trade isn't moving in your favor for a few candles, you pull it. And then I think in my personal opinion, that's the, that's the perfect uh, stop loss approach. And uh, just try it out to see how it works for you. Um, it, it sounds complicated at first, but it's quite straightforward. Uh, while we're at stops, let me talk about a little bit about should you use or is it okay to not use a stop. And personally, no. <laughs> uh, I don't think, first of all, it's very, very risky, obviously. Um, of course, not always will your stop get executed, and you should always read the fine print, fine print from your broker. But at the same time, if you don't have a stop loss, you cannot determine your position size. And that is a big, big problem, obviously, because, well, when you get into a trade, you should define how much are you willing to lose on the trade. And you can only do that if you have a stop loss in place. And if you don't have a stop loss in place, well, you don't have a position size because, yeah, you might say you have a mental stop and you know exactly where your mental stop is. But let's be honest, when emotions come into the, into the game and the price goes against you, the price is at your mental stop loss, how often... Will you then say, okay, uh, it's at a stop loss, but let me wait a little bit longer. I think this will turn around. And then you have completely screwed up your position size and your risk management. And you, have, and you will have so much inconsistencies in your, in your P&L, in your, in your e uh, equity graph, that this is not professional trading anymore. This is just gambling and this is emotional trading. So not having a stop loss is just not a solution and uh, not an option at all. So if you ever catch yourself not using a stop loss, remember you are just gambling. And this is very, very important to keep in mind. Um, a location-based stop loss with a little bit of a buffer, that is usually where you are doing well. And this is usually what gives you the best option and the best possible outcome. So I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure also to go to tradesciety.com slash podcast. First of all, you find all the previous episodes there. And second, there is also a form where you can submit your own question anonymously. Um, and yeah, I will answer it in the next, uh, uh, in the next podcast episodes. Yeah, that's the word. Um, <laughs> have a good one and you will hear from me.